Okay, what we're going to be looking at in this video is converting the uh, Farish Class 37 to 2mm fine scale. So that's actually converting the wheels via a lathe to 2mm fine scale standards. Now I've just received the model uh, yesterday and I think it looks great. I think this is a um, part of the new Farish Ryband. Um, batch of new models and it's very detailed I think it's uh, I think it's a gorgeous model uh, I'm just currently building a test track uh, from uh, the easy track system from the two millimeter association now this is actually going to be yeah my, my test track so I've built a couple of uh, turnouts before, but this is actually going to be my first fully functional, well hopefully by the time I've done it, fully functional turnout. And I'll be using this to test the uh, the conversion of the class 37. Fingers crossed everything will work nicely. Um, now the 2mm association they do actually sell uh, drop-in wheel sets, which I believe works on this, this class 37. Uh, I think they're like 450 an axle, so yeah, could get quite costly. So I'm actually going to try removing the wheels and actually turning the wheels down uh, to two mil fine, two mil standards myself, uh, and hopefully save uh, save some pennies there. <laughs> so um, this is going to be the first of a few videos for converting N-gauge locos to two mil fine scale. I've got. Excuse the messy desk, I've got a few uh, mostly steam locos. I'm mostly interested in steam. But I'm sitting down there. So I've got a few uh, locos to convert using various different methods for each, but I hope to be documenting the progress of each with a couple of YouTube videos. But uh, I thought we'd start with the, uh, the Class 37. Okie dokie, right. Uh, what I've done is I've removed the uh, the body. This is the uh, the chassis upside down. I should really have a loco cradle ready to hold the thing, but my desk will just have to do. And the first thing I've done, if I can get the camera to focus, is actually remove the, um, the kind of the the, the uh, bottom part of the the bogey. This is held in place with a small clip. If you look on the other side. My knife in there. There's actually a clip there, and that holds the bottom part on. So I actually just put in my exacto knife and kind of prise that off, and that uh, just popped off. So that's that way. So that allows us to get to the wheels. So, for example, you have to be careful because these are loose at this point. So you, you will just pry out. So I think that actually clipped in. Yeah, they actually popped in. So what I do now is just pop, pop out one of the axles, and uh, get to the next step. Okay, that wasn't too difficult. And there we have one wheel axle, two wheels, and the gear in the middle. And it looks like all six uh, six wheels, six sets are actually geared. So. There we go. Now, something that's very, very important if you're actually going to consider performing this kind of conversion is uh, always have a uh, a beer standing by. Only kidding, guys. Okay, uh, just to give you a, a quick overview of what I'm planning to do, whether it works is another thing. Um. The difference between engage wheels and just give me a second wheels from the uh, two mm association. Now the main difference is the wheel profile. If I turn them that way, you can probably see the back wheels are from the the engage wheels from the 37. This is a set of wheels from the two mm association. Now the main difference is the uh, the flange is a lot 
thicker than the two mil wheels. They're about just under 0.6 of a mil, the, the actual thickness, uh, when the standard for two mil wheels is actually 0.3. It's a lot thinner. And the other obvious difference is the, the uh, thickness or the width of the tread. Now I think that's about, that's probably just over two mil thick, the width of that tread on the N-gauge wheels. The standard on two mil wheels is one millimeter, which is 1.3 overall, including the flange. So putting that aside, what I'm going to do is actually remove each of the wheels off the axle using a pinion puller and using a very cheap lathe, which is a Unimat 1, um, actually turn, <coughs> well mount the wheels on, on, on a plastic spindle, which I'll show you how to do, and turn the, uh, the, the wheels down basically. So I'll turn the flange down from one side, so the thickness of the flange is reduced to 0.3 of a millimeter, and then remove the wheel, turn it around the other way, and actually face off the uh, the tread down to one mil, hopefully giving giving a proper uh, two mil profile for the wheel. Okay, this is a GWS uh, pinion puller. I actually, sell two sizes. This is actually the, the smaller size for shaft diameters between one to two mil in diameter. So I've actually inserted one of the wheels in there and I'll turn the pinion puller and that should remove the wheel cleanly and squarely off of the axle with hopefully <laughs> hopefully no damage but uh, here we will see. Okay that was done and that was actually trouble free. Um, what I thought was interesting um, I've only really, this was actually the first Diesel I've actually looked at. I've mostly been looking at the steam <coughs> steam locos, but um, on the steam locos, the wheels have actually got a plastic bush in the middle, like this one, to actually kind of ins insulate the two wheels. Um, looks like the design on this one has a plastic bush, and the other is actually metal to metal, which I thought was quite interesting. But I suppose you only need the one bush to actually be electrically isolated, so. That's not a problem. You can actually see that um, have problems with focus here. You can see that this side of the axle. You can see the wear and tear on that side. So that was the side that was actually uh, metal to metal contact. But now they're off the axle, I can actually begin to uh, do some work on these and begin mounting them up on on the lathe. Okay, what we need to do is um, is to find a way to actually hold the wheel in the uh, the chuck of the lathe in such a fashion that it's it's spinning true and flat without wobbling uh, it's very important that it spins completely true completely flat otherwise um, it's all going to be a big mess um, you know, it's actually impossible just to put the wheel into the chuck and that's going to damage the wheel and it's just not going to spin true 